Hello and welcome to the episode 157 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. The Beatles had their first EMI recording session today, but we'll also have another two sessions in Abbey Road and a continuation of the band's 1964 war tour. Let's open the episode with a live event happened on the 6th of June 1960, the Jive and Rock Night at the Grosvenor Barroom in Wallasey, England, was hosting two bands from Liverpool, the Silver Beatles and Jerry and the Pacemakers. It was the first time the two bands shared the stage, but it won't be the last. The Silver Beatles were George Harrison, John Lennon and Paul McCartney on guitar and voice, Tommy Moore on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass. Another live performance one year later in 1961. The Beatles, with Pete Bass on drums, performed at the Top Ten Club in Hamburg, West Germany, for their ongoing second residency in town. In 1962 we get a key event in the history of the Beatles. The lads, still featuring Pete Bass on drums, enter the Abbey Road Studio 2 for the first time. Everyone even the shy Pete Best, got on well with producer George Martin. In particular, John Lennon and George Harrison were impressed by the fact that Martin had produced solo comedy records by Peter Sellers and Spike Milligan, plus some with the comedy group The Goons. Martin was equally impressed by the irreverent wits of the lads. The edition slash recording session took place from 7 until 10 pm. The band, according to sound engineer Norman Smith, failed to make a great musical impression, although the lads captured everyone with their visuals and personalities. Not only they didn't perform that many originals, focusing on covers, but their equipment was so bad that the staff had to work hard to bring out some decent sounds to record on tape. Paul's hamp necessitated a huge amount of reverb, John's had to be tied up with some string to stop rattling, and Pete Best's cymbals had some problems that made them sound lousy. After everything was ready and a lot of material had been tried out, four proper recordings were attempted. A cover of Bessame Mucho and three Lennon-McCartney originals, Love Me Do, P.S. I Love You and Ask Me Why. To this day, the only surviving recordings from the session are Besame Mucho, found in a private collection in the 1980s, and Love Me Do, found around 1994. Both had long been presumed lost, like the rest of the recordings coming out of the session, and both were included in the first Beatles anthology album. After the recording, the Beatles were called into the control room to listen to the playback. Norman Smith in the complete Beatles recording sessions, remembers. We gave them a long lecture about their equipment and what would have to be done about it if they were to become recording artists. They didn't say a word back, not a word, and they didn't even nod their heads in agreement. When he finished, George Martin said, Look, I've laid in to you for quite a time and you haven't responded. Is there anything you don't like? I remember they all looked at each other for a long while, shuffling their feet. Then George Harrison took a long look at George and said, yeah, I don't like your tie. That cracked the ice for us, and for the next 15-20 minutes they were pure entertainment. It is not clear whether or not the Beatles left the premises having signed a contract that tied them to Parlophone. Norman Smith remembers that George Martin asked for his opinion about the band, and he seemed unsure on whether or not they deserved to be put under contract. On the other hand, Smith admits that the fact that Martin was present at the test recording was so unusual that perhaps the band had been already signed. Beatles historian Mark Lewison shares this opinion, stating that the contract was signed before the proper recording session began, although this seems unlikely, as nobody has come out with supporting statements about that throughout the years. In the morning of the 6th of June 1964, the three Beatles, George, John and Paul, and Ringo's replacement Jimmy Nicol, 
were filmed while on a tourist boat traveling through the canals of Amsterdam. Some 30,000 to 50,000 people had come to greet the band, and so the entire city police force of 15,000 officers was on duty for the day. Also on the boat, there were members of the international press. In the afternoon, the band performed two houses at the Wellinghal op Hoop van Zegen in Blocker, to the north of Amsterdam. The first was a matinee, taking place at 2.30 pm, before 2,000 fans. The second took place at 7 pm, with another 7,000 people in attendance. Given the nature of concerts in the 1960s, the Beatles were actually on stage at 4.30 and 10.05 pm, respectively topping a bill that included another eight support acts. The evening performance was filmed and showed by television news and edited for newsreels in cinemas. In 1966, we get a six-and-a-half-hour session at the Abbey Road EMI Studios, starting at 7 pm. Paul McCartney recorded a final vocal overdub on Eleanor Rigby and several songs received the final mix, and your bird can sing, for no one, I'm only sleeping, and tomorrow never knows. Revolver was getting towards completion. We find the Beatles busy again at the EMI Studios in 1968, between 2.45 pm and 2.45 am. Ringo double-tracked his vocals on take 5 of Don't Pass Me By, erasing the bass part recorded by Paul in the process. A new bass part was duly recorded. After a reduction mix, more bass overdubs were taped, and the song was edited to erase an extra bar in the second chorus. During the session, the band was visited by Kenny Everett, who taped an interview with them for BBC Radio 1 The Kenny Everett Show, broadcast on the 9th of June between 10 am and 12 noon. As usual with Kenny Everett, the interview was a chaotic affair, with lads singing or parodying bits of songs and offering often unintelligible talk. Finally, John and Paul first, and then Paul and Ringo recorded jingles for the show. After the interview, Ringo and Paul went back to work on Don't Pass Me By. A rough mix of the song was prepared by the end of the session for the band to take away. In the meantime, John gave another interview, this time more intelligible, with Victor Spinetti for the 22nd of June show of BBC Two's release, broadcast between 10.05 and 10.45 pm. The interview, filmed somewhere in Abbey Road, focused on the theatre production of In His Own Right, directed by Spinetti. Today's session was actually concluded with John working on more sound effects to be used in the theatre production, continuing the work he had begun on the 24th of November 1967. This concludes today's episode. Well, actually, there is one more thing I have to do, reminding you that you can find some info on how to help me to put out more and better music-related content visiting www.simonmas.com support. Tomorrow, we got the Beatles flying to Hong Kong and then George and Ringo flying to the States. But the episode won't be all about flying around the globe. Tune in to find out more about the life of the four you love. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.